Hey, this is Rich McDonald, and I play Commander David Mason on Call of Duty Black Ops 2. You're listening to Everything Geek Podcast. Hello, I'm Simon Fisherbecker. You probably know me better as Dorian Moldavar from Doctor Who, or the Fat Friar from Harry Potter. And this is Everything Geek Podcast. Your attention, masters, mistresses. All systems functional for the Everything Geek Podcast. Hey, it's James Arnold Taylor, the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and... Master Poku in Star Wars The Clone Wars, and you're listening to Everything Geek, the podcast. Jackpot with the Everything Geek Podcast. Hello everyone, you're listening to the Everything Geek Podcast. I'm your host, Rory, and joining me is co-host Al. Hey everyone. And also joining us today is a very special guest. We have stuntman Colin Skeeping, who is best known as Luke Skywalker's stunt double in the Star Wars original trilogy. And did stunts on Live and Let Die, The Spy Who Loved Me, Space 1999, Superman 2, Superman 3, Octopussy, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, The Living Daylights, Batman and God and I. He also played Death Star Trooper, Devin Cant in Star Wars Episode 4, A New Hope, a pilot in Superman the Movie, and a security guard in Space 1999. Colin, how are you? Hello, thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure to have you join us today on the podcast. So getting right into my questions for you, Colin, my first question is, how did you decide you wanted to become a stuntman? Well, I was always very keen on sport as a youngster. I was a gymnast and a diver, and I was very keen on bike techniques and also very keen on cars and motorcycles. So it seemed to be a, a nice way of doing what I loved doing uh, and living dangerously and, and earning a living at the same time. It's a very interesting answer. Thank you for that. Uh, moving on to my second question, how were you originally hired to be Luke Skywalker's stunt double in the Star Wars films? Well, Peter Diamond, who was the stunt coordinator who used me in productions before, felt that I had the right physical abilities to do the stunts that were required, and also I was uh, of a similar size and build. To, to Mark Hamill and fit the costume and everything, so it was through Peter Diamond that I got the work. It's very interesting, very interesting indeed. Moving on to my third question, you worked as Luke Skywalker's stunt double on all three of the original Star Wars films, but which scene that you got to do stunts on did you most enjoy working on, if you had to choose one? Yeah, that's actually really interesting because I know with similar scenes in other films, like they would use wires. So it's actually really interesting that you did it without them. Uh, very, very interesting indeed. Thank you for that. 
Uh, moving on to my fourth question, as a stuntman with over 100 credits to your name, you've obviously had to do some difficult or intense stunts in your career. Have there ever been any occasions where you've been told to do a certain stunt and you weren't sure if you could pull it off? Uh, it's more a question of, te of, of how you shoot it than, not, than whether you can do it or not. For example, uh, something which may not be possible to execute in one particular um, take, you could do it um, perhaps in two, two takes. So you could do a takeoff and then a landing. Um, it always stands out in your mind when things, sometimes things that you don't expect to go wrong can go wrong. Um, and your experience over the years gets you to know whether something can be done for real in one take. For example, and we all know that if you're doing a high fall off a roof and they want to see you land on the concrete below, that obviously cannot be done as one shot. It has to be done as two. One, with a high fall into the airbag. Two, with a low fall to replicate you hitting the ground. So in... in that's the good thing about cinema and that film and TV as well is that you can piece it all together to make a complete stunt out of two or three different parts. Yeah, it's definitely a really interesting answer and thank you very much for that in-depth answer to my question. My final question for you, Colin, is do you have any upcoming stunt films or any other projects you would like to talk about? Um, well, I'm, I'm 71 now. I'm sort of generally just coordinating things now, doing one or two car stunt stunts, but um, not working full time. Funny enough, I do a lot of work with my dogs now. They I do a lot of film and TV work and stage shows because dog training was something that I really took on to um, quite early on in my stunt career when we were constantly working with animals that hadn't been trained to do the work that was involved. So I decided to train my own dogs up uh, as a result of which they've been extremely successful because they are stunt dogs, they know how to work in front of camera, um, they know how to make the day run smoothly, and I've been doing quite a lot with them recently, more for pleasure than anything else. Um, you know, I've stunt coordinated some work that they've been on, but also I've been a dog handler, we're currently working on a production of Annie, uh, and also I've got um, Sandy's doing a couple of commercials, so that's my life slightly changed in direction in the last few years. I don't really want to be throwing myself off buildings anymore now. That's very understandable. Yeah, it's very understandable when I'm sure you've done a lot of it in your career. Um, no, but that is very interesting with mentioning the stunt training with your dogs. That's actually really interesting. Uh, so that's all of my questions for you, Colin, but I'll let my co-host Al ask his now. He has a couple for you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Colin. Um, what are some of your favorite memories from working on Star Wars? Um... And we were in, in Northern Norway on, on the, um, the Empire Strikes Back and we got snowed in uh, uh, into the hotel for several days when we couldn't shoot because there was a, 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 a blizzard going on. And so we, we made a live show up to entertain um, the, the members of the crew and what have you were there. And because I played various musical instruments and other people played things, we made up a group and a band. And we had a lot of fun doing that, which was something that, you know, we wouldn't have done if we'd been shooting every day. Um, that, that particularly stands out in my mind as fun. We in um, Crescent City, California was great. That was where we did the, the Ewoks in the giant redwood forest. Uh, we had a lot of fun there. It was a lovely hotel. Um, those two stand out as sort of being slightly um, outside the norm, if you see what I mean. Yeah, definitely. Um, what were some of your most dangerous stunts that you had to do in any film or TV show you worked on? Well, I always say the most dangerous one is the next one because I survived all the others. But um, I suppose there have been some that have gone wrong which, you, which for things outside my control, like when the helicopter in the Empire, got, the rotors got bent when the prop people pushed it back into the hangar. And when it went, we went up the next morning with me hanging underneath it, 
um, and all I was supposed to do was had to drop into the snow, but because the, the, the rotors were bent, Mark Wolf, the helicopter pilot, lost control, and I was hanging underneath, swinging backwards and forwards about 70 feet above the ground, uh, and as time went on, I couldn't hold on anymore, and it was swinging from one side to the other, and then I looked down, and underneath me were rocks, but when I looked across to my left, I could see just white, so I waited till I swung maximum to the left, and I let go, and I somersaulted several times through the air, and I landed in a deep snow drift just four feet away from the rocks. So that, that always stood out as, as, as a memory. Uh, so it was, that wasn't supposed to be that dangerous in that fact. Uh, Stanley Kubrick, I worked on a film called Clockwork Orange with him, and he didn't like some people falling into boxes and what have you, and I had to do a high back door and I had to rig it to a, a, a table that would collapse at the right moment and what have you. That was quite dangerous because, yes, I did knock myself out, but that was when I was young and I first started and, and thought I was invincible. Um, so that was far more... You wouldn't do that now. Nobody would do that now because modern techniques mean you don't have to. Yeah, definitely. That's all very interesting. That's all very interesting. Thank you. Um, that's all my questions. Okay, thanks very much. That, that's all of our questions for you today, Colin. It's been a pleasure talking to you on the podcast. I hope you have a good, good show and I hope it's so well received. Thank you very much, Colin, and hopefully we can talk to you again at some point. Yes, indeed. Yes, yes. You've, got, you've just talked to me on Facebook and that would be fine. So I'll talk to you again soon then. Bye and thanks again for joining us. Make sure to check out our podcast links, check out our website, website.everythinggeekpodcast.com slash EGP. Check out our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekpodcast. Check out our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash user slash everythinggeekcast. Check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash everythinggeekp. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash official podcast. Check out our Mixcloud profile, www.mixcloud.com slash podcast. Email us at the below, email podcast at gmail.com. Check out our companion podcast, everythinggeekcomiccast, www.facebook.com slash everythinggeekcomiccast. Make sure to check out the host's YouTube channels. Mine is www.youtube.com slash user slash separatist destroyers. Check out Al's Twitter, twitter.com slash mygerma. Check out Colin Skeeping's credits on IMDb, www.imdb.